What up, what up, what up? It's your boy Bass. Y'all tuned in to another episode of Ian's Podcast. On this episode, we got we diving straight into it. We got Rowdy Rich, and we're gonna go straight off the top from his um anti-social album. <laughs> I don't wanna call it the anti-social album. It's please excuse me uh for being anti-social if you wanna be, you know, technical about it. Um but at the same time, we wanna dive straight into it. I want y'all to listen to the, a couple few seconds of the intro um, just to get a feel for the song as we go into breaking it down. From out the streets became a millionaire. I know niggas started in the trap and they still there. Remember I was robbing up our jury and I still wear it. Came a long way with all my niggas and they still here. My big brother behind bars fighting 200 years. I got the call out of my dog and I don't know how to feel. Gotta stay on service time. You know it's war time. I remember I ain't used to leave the house without my so basically just starting off the gate um just from off of what you just heard i feel like he just started laying it on you um he started letting you know about his um his traumas and basically just what he been through just coming out the gate that like that helped build him to where he's at today and then he also lets you know where he at today you know <laughs> um but going more deep into it um this album comes with a lot of notable features. Uh, for one in particular, one of my favorite is the Meek Mill joint, uh, Peter. Uh, also, um, another song I like on the album is Box, um, but then that's just a little different. Um, but yeah, he got a few notable uh, features, and the album I feel like is is packed just right. And at that, the lineup, he got like a hitter lineup, like. As y'all just heard, that's the intro. Um, just starting off the gate, he started hitting it raw with the emotions. He started tying you into the album, and he started, and you can start to see how the album is going to kind of translate to the name, um, where he says, "Please forgive me for being antisocial." So first, off the bat, like he hitting you with the, you know, with, with the heavy hitters of what's going on in his life. Like he said, he still wore the chain <laughs> that he bought from, you know, that he, he got back when he was robbing. You know, which let him know that like he's still he present, but you know, his past, you know, he ain't never forget about his past in a sense, because his past is what helped made him who he is today. Um, and you will hear that as he starts to go down the line, and he starts to reflect back on like uh, his brother situation and um, just his mindset that he wake up with on a daily day basis. But then when he kind of reflect back on those moments, it kind of give you his perspective for like, damn, like this is what he actually been through. And you can gotta get an understanding of who the artist is, not necessarily what the music is. If you kind of get what I mean, and I go more in the deeper. Um, thought with that um when i say like who the artist is is more so like this is this is like the key components of the key compounds that make up who i am like you feel me versus where you think about music you be thinking about all right who was the producer you know the producer the artist uh where he get his sound from and stuff like that more so where did he get the thought process of his lyrics where did what what kind of influences creativity what kind of influence um just the, the entertainer he is um, overall, which means, you know, he's saying like, you know, please excuse, uh, please excuse me for being antisocial. As a musician, as an um, entertainer, people expect for you to always be social. But he like, you know, I come from a certain type of background where we wasn't as social. And here's why. So please excuse me if I'm not the most friendliest person or please excuse me for if I'm not the most talkative or most expressionate or just the most outgoing person in the endeavors that you may feel I should be, you know, <laughs> all joyful about. Um, but I feel like it's a it's a dope song and really going off into it. I, I like how the intro of it um, just going into the energy flow of it. And you can see that his energy also start to pick up as he start to tell the story. And the beat also start to pick up. So I feel like those two was like parallel with each other, which was pretty good, which kind of keep you on track and kind of keep you building up, you know. And then it's kind of, you know, and I feel like it's, it's a good pass off to the next song. You know, like just going, diving straight into it because then now you want to kind of see what the next emotion is going to be. You know, so it's sort of like storytelling. It's like, oh, snaps, you just watched all this stuff happen. Now what's going to happen? 
like now what's the next part of the story <laughs> like you know um and that's what I also like about the album is when I was speaking about like lining it up um you, you want to think about like storytelling like I want to see like the different points like I would translate to it like oh yeah I was at this high point this was us we was at this high point but then this was the low point that came after that high point you know like stuff like that and that's what I mean by you get to know the artist versus getting to know the music you know because sometimes the artists, you know, you could go back and reflect on the moment of how the music was made. Like, man, we was in the studio. It was lit that night. I happened to see such and such down in the next studio. Then they ended up coming in collab. And then it was just a magical moment. Then next thing you know, we, we created this great hit. Yeah, that's the story behind the music. But I want to hear the story behind the artist. Um, so I like when artists, a lot of times, align their music up in a way where... It's sort of like telling a story of their life or their experience or that emotion. Um, and not say keeping you on an emotional roller coaster, but it's keeping you emotionally stimulated in a sense. Like you're not going to be just turned up the whole time because eventually you're going to fall out of turn up energy. <laughs> you feel me? Then it's like, all right, well, this music is only good for when I'm turning up, which is cool because some people only want to make that type of energy flow music. And you got some people, that's the only way they want to feel when they listen to music. That's the energy. That's what they want speaking back to them. They want to feel energy. They listen to music to get energy. So, yeah. So, that's why I say, like, and then understanding the story behind those type of artists, too. Um, but we going to go back into Roddy Rich because this is about Roddy Rich. I feel like uh, for him coming out the gate, uh, especially going into the year, man, he's already a Grammy Award nominated. Um for two singles, I want to say Ballin' with Mustard and then also with Nipsey Hussle Racks in the middle. Um, it could be a very, very, very good year. He started it off well, uh, especially with dropping the album. Um, it's doing well on the charts, doing well on the numbers. Um, and then I feel like it's going to really help position him and position his sound in the industry. And with today's music, that's a big thing. Um, Especially him coming out the West Coast and him being like one of the younger guys coming out the West Coast. Uh, he's able to like kind of build a platform for that younger voice, uh, L.A. Even though there's a, lot of, uh, there, there's a lot of other young talent coming out of L.A. and the West Coast that's making noise. But right now, he, he, got, he, got, he got a lot of clout and he got a lot of support and he got a lot of uh, people following his movement right now. And really, people is like gravitating towards songs when you start thinking about the younger uh, crowd. Mm, excuse me, my bad, y'all. <clears throat> At birth, but when you start thinking about the younger crowd and younger generation, the type of sound that they gravitating to, because really they're gonna be the ones that's gonna be pushing the music next. Um, but if you think about the songs and the sounds that they gravitating to, he got that new sound, but he also have that lyrical, um, that that lyrical sense where he can. He can get you turning up, but at the same time, you don't get lost up in this, uh, like you know, in the melody and nothing like that. He's actually really saying something. He's actually really telling the story. Um, he actually putting um, visual thoughts into it. And when I say visual thoughts, I mean like he he using words and he using phrases that make you think, that bring your imagination to life, that make you kind of play it out in your own mind. Sometimes when music some music don't do that. You just kind of just listen to it. You're like, oh, that's hard. And you kind of gravitate, like I said, you, you kind of gravitate to the, music, uh, to the musical aspect of it, like the beat, the melody. You're not, it's not really taking you to a space. You're not really visualizing or imagining. Um, I like the way he does his because his is like a mixture of both because it does play into the music too as well. But also he takes you to a place where you can kind of see where he was at. You can kind of imagine, so you get caught up in imagining, like, damn, and it starts to become more deep. But, you know, it's your boy Baz, and this is just a music review on the boy Roddy Rich, man. I wish him the most success in his career. Man, and if y'all haven't, go listen to that. Please excuse me uh, for being antisocial. And the track that we just covered, man, it's the intro, man. It's going to be the first song y'all hear, man, right off the gates. And when you tune into it, man, comment. Man, let me know how you feel, man. And if you and if you bold about it, man, your voice hold weight, man. Send us a voice message, man. Let us know how you feel. It's your boy Bass, and y'all tuning in the end podcast, and we out.